On. I like the way they look, but uh, this is the real me. You look amazing. That's Welcome crazy. to Nightcap with the Land Geek guys. Whoa, you see, my, see my flight of whiskeys? That's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. I get, I'm get. i going to choose one for the next uh, five weeks. Isn't that exciting? Look, you it's mean got a sleeve. One every time we throw the show up? Look at that. That's amazing. Isn't that fun? Now, where'd you get that? I got it at a local uh, local distributor. Okay. All right. Mike, tell everybody who we are. Who are we? What are we doing here? We're Nightcap of the Land Geek guys. So here's the thing, right? It's 10.34 on the East Coast. We're a couple minutes late tonight. It's, I know that's 7.30 in the West Coast, but we figure there's a lot of people out there like to burn that the uh, so-called midnight oil. So we talk about land investing and we have a little drink. Uh, we've been on for about uh, six years now. We're very successful. We have uh, been picked <laughs> up by Netflix and by uh, YouTube. Uh, YouTube Red, the same host of the Cobra Kai. And, uh, right. and no, actually we just like talking about land investing and having a drink and, you know, people ask questions. Uh, we have guests on, we've had some phenomenal guests on. Phenomenal as Scott would say guests on here and uh, it's all about content connection and a little bit of humor right but uh, really it's just uh, all about land investing so Scott Bossman all the way from Wisconsin and this is me Mike Zeno from Boston awesome well you know what uh, since I don't have a cocktail yet it's time to tap into my one of one that of my what do you call these vials that looks huh? like a cigar it does look like a cigar, but it's whiskey. All right, well, go ahead. Pretty awesome, right? So, hey, uh, tonight, I think it's fair that we warn the community that um, maybe the content wasn't prepared to the best. No, that's <laughs> not even true. No, is- well, you know what? Here's the thing, though. I think I think we should, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun this episode because we're, we're doing something a little different. Uh, we're going to talk about nightcaps on the nightcap. Correct. But what do you think I, of that? I think it's a great idea. And I think with your creativity, somehow these nightcaps are going to correlate or relate directly to land investing. So I'm fairly confident this is going to be an extremely successful endeavor. And uh, listen, it's, it's, you know, uh, like Mark always says, a good salesman, right? It's got that part, part of that script, right? And part of that improv. Um, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So we're like a mix of those two. We got to be I'm the script and you're the improv. That's really how it is. It that way. <laughs> That's how I am in life too. I'm not a big improv guy. I mean, I can do it if I need to, but. No, so, I'm um, looking at the comments real quick. I got to ask, because I, I, tonight I want to feel like, is Barbara Timido saying there's an echo or echo? I think there's an echo on your end. Is that correct, Barbara? And Barbara. by the way, community, we would really love to hear any questions from you tonight that we can help you with. Are you experiencing some type of uh, pain point? Have you hit a roadblock? Mike would like to help you tonight. So hit us with questions. Uh, we're we're going to be interacting with you. Sorry for the delay in the uh, Facebook, in, in, in what we are saying in the Facebook comments. That's something that I wish Zoom was a little bit better at, Mike. There's a little bit. Oh, it's a lot play. better than the old Be Live platform where we had Scott Todd come on here, and we couldn't. We had to have an interpreter known as Matt Forbes. So yes. it's not better than that. Uh, but it's, a, it's much better than that. Yes. Matt says it's so, no uh, echo. So uh, 
We got a few. We got a. We got a number of viewers here, Mike. We got uh, Michael Tapetta, Barbara Thibodeau, Matthew Forbes, as always. Jeannie's watching. Jeannie, I saw that you were in Minnesota recently. We were so close to one another. Uh, Scott Keelan is watching. He is also in Minnesota, just two hours away from me. We're getting a good Midwest following here, Mike. Are you saying Jeannie Morum? Yeah, Jeannie Morum. Oh, she's a faithful viewer. Hi, Jeannie. Yes. How are you? I hope Kurt's doing well. Kurt inspired me at the last boot camp because he's like truly jacked, right? And Laura was like, Mike, you got to step up. Like, it's not really hitting the weight. So very inspired. Uh, Kurt has been competing. I know I keep bringing that up every episode, but you know what? It's really impressive. And Jeannie, hope uh, everything's going good. It's good to see you watching the show. Awesome. Yeah, Kurt is jacked. He, he looks phenomenal. All right. So, Mike, tonight we're talking about nightcaps. Okay? Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, all of these drinks that we have chosen – can relate to the land business in some regard. That so awesome. basically all I'm going to do is just say the name of the drink and you, the philosophical wonder, the improv extraordinaire are going to elaborate. And if I happen to get it wrong, you'll correct me. So this is easy. Right, exactly. And, uh, and, and as we talk about the drinks, I'm going to talk about the ingredients, what's in the drinks. And you know what? We can even like, we can come up with a recipe, a nightcap recipe book. This is awesome already because you've really already like truly inspiring me in my creative side because the ingredients, the recipe. I mean, we're talking about flight school. We're talking about the successful land business. It's a recipe. It's It's got the ingredients, right? Like, look at all that you need for success is on that table in front of you. You just got to put them together in the right order. And then you could actually start, you know, putting them together and mixing them and making it happen. You've got to put the life energy into them. So the land business is nothing but a few ingredients that you need to mix together in the right proportion, in the right order. And then boom, voila. Is that the word? Voila, voila. Vo voila, voila. Yes. Voila, voila. All right. So that, that's awesome, Mike. Okay. So the first drink tonight that uh, we want to talk about, and, and this, this actually, uh, it, it kind of goes off what we were talking about last week. Uh, remember what we talked about last week? Whole lot of land investing, I'm sure. <laughs> we talked about focus. Yes. Real world, real world focus. And you remember one of the things we first talked about? Well, uh, I know what it was. It was the Pomodoro method. It was released first, first ever on the night cap. You're <laughs> anyway, you're a funny guy. Yeah, it was the first ever on the nightcap, but we also talked about the importance. We talked about the importance of how your mornings can result in productivity, right? Yes. Because yes. we are most focused, we are most creative, we are most rested, we are most energetic in the morning hours. So, I agree. My pick for the morning drink, okay, tomorrow, five a.m. is the tequila sunrise. Now, just so we clear, we're not advocating you get up and drink one of these and do the land investing. Just to be clear, <laughs> we're, we're simply correlating the name of these drinks and, and with different aspects of the business. Because, yeah, tequila sunrise, sunrise. Uh, well, you say tequila, I think of like Arizona myself. You know, I, I think, honestly, I think of tequila. I don't know. I just think because we were out there and we had some of the most amazing Mexican food. I ate in a restaurant that was formerly known as a, as a church. Uh, in, in Arizona is where our, uh, our you know, the head of this, what we, what we all learned from Mark Podolsky is out there in Arizona. So, but hey, listen, Tequila Sunrise, yeah, get up early and get this done. We're talking about how to, well, look at those lights. That's pretty crazy, right? Um, <laughs> you get up in the morning, right? And mailing and marketing moves a needle. If you could get, you know, get something accomplished along those lines, mailing and marketing first thing in the morning, Pat yourself on the back. It's a good day, right? And uh, it's done. So, but tequila sunrise, yeah, I like that sunrise. Get, Kenyon Zick, four thirty. He says, "You he gets up at four thirty. Oh man, he that's does. talking about early bird he, catches the worm right there." He's broadcasting live on Facebook at like four fifty nine. That guy. So that's pretty <laughs> awesome. I want to see you with a tequila sunrise sometime, Kenyon, at four thirty in the morning. Hey, so you want to hear what's in the tequila sunrise, Mike? Let's hear it. 
one and a half ounces tequila, three quarter cup orange juice, three quarter ounces grenadine, and an orange slice uh, for garnish. Wow, that's a that's a, that's a nice little mix. Again, it's a nice mix. It's a very nice mix, and again. It's, it's ingredients coming together to make something palatable, something that you can drink. It's something that you put together, right? This is true. I don't know why that is true. This is this is a recipe, our business. So you're talking about making a drink, and I'm thinking, yeah, add a little bit of this, right? Add a little mailing, add a little marketing, add a little due diligence, add a nice closing technique or two, right? A couple of sales closing techniques, and you've got a nice business, right? But you just have to repeat it. Rinse, repeat, as Mark says, because maybe the first time you mix that tequila sunrise, it may taste like a, uh, a gin tonic, right? Because you just don't right. have it down yet. You don't know the proportions. and some of the, But then you get someone who's a masterful bartender, puts that together. You'd be like, wow, that's like amazing. Our business is amazing when you put it together in the right proportion. So I love it. I love the ingredients. That's awesome. Very, very good. All right. So I think we should move on to another nightcap, so to speak. And you know what? Uh, none of us would be here without who, Mike? Mark Podolsky. Mark Podolsky, you complete me. I completed you. <laughs> good, good job. That's, it's that's true. First I mean, listen, first segments I, I, out of the way. So, so I have a drink. We have a drink to honor Mark Podolsky. Any idea what the name of the drink might be by chance? Well, you know what? One of my favorite movies is Old School. Right, and am, am I right? I it's like uh, he comes it's a great in, movie. And, and who is he? We 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 have look who's here today, right? And it's not Boo, it's not Blue, it's who? Is that a good lineup? It's true, right? Am I not speaking the truth? It, is well, the Godfather in that movie, Mike? Yeah, they call him the Godfather when he comes they in. Call him that? I haven't seen that movie forever. Yeah, when the guy comes in, the head of fraternity, they call him the Godfather. How about, hey, listen, how about I know, my, you want to talk about the Godfather? How, how about if we're going to talk about the Godfather, we talk about the. That's the other Godfather. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That one movie that came out in the 70s by that one guy, Francis Ford Coppola. Mark listen, Podolsky is the Godfather. I agree. I will, we need to drink to him right now. And uh, I would love to have a Godfather sometime with Mark Podolsky. But anyway, did you know there was a drink called the Godfather? I did not. But I would like to say the reason they called him the Godfather, he was the head of the fraternity, head of the club, head of that organization. The Godfather, clearly head of the organization. Mark is the head of something that's really important. And I think this is a good stand up. Can I tell you, I, I, I repeat for those who haven't heard, the reason that I even met Mark Podolsky in the first place. And then maybe tell. tell me how you why you met. Well, I was happened to be, and I know it's kind of rehashing maybe an old story, but real quick, 40 grand in debt. A good friend of mine, Jeff Axon, was like, listen, uh, you gotta keep come meet this Mark Podolsky guy. He's like, he's incredible. Uh, you know, my land investing uh, portfolio is, is, is insane. It's because of this guy down in Arizona. I'm like, I'm 40 grand in debt. You want me to go invest in some sort of land investing program? He's like, seriously, you got to come meet him. So talked to my girlfriend at the time, my wife now. We went out there and we met the godfather in person. And I'll tell you, very sincere, very authentic, very transparent, very honest. And just right away was taken back by that. And I knew we had something that could get us out of that debt. So one year later, we were. So the godfather, absolutely, totally agree. Salute. Fantastic. Skull. Skull to uh, Skull. Mark Podolsky. Skull. I would have to say that Mark Podolsky does not take people out of the knees or <laughs> off them. Off them when they're... You're not that type of godfather. <laughs> but anyway, in the godfather drink, we have uh, whiskey. Yep. And do you know what's in the godfather, Mike? Any ideas? No, but whiskey's strong. What else? Yeah, it's about two-thirds whiskey, one-third amaretto. Whoa. Would you consider amaretto sweet? Or what would you say amaretto is? Amaretto's kind of, yeah, it's sweet, I would say. And uh, anybody want to weigh in, you can go and do that. But yeah, so it's say, mostly whiskey, right? Um, but look at it. amaretto. Clearly, it's an Italian liqueur. I'm looking this up for the, by the uh, power of Google, right? An Italian liqueur uh, originated in Serona, Italy, um, originally flavored from bitter almonds, 
Uh, wow. Yeah, it's bitter, bitter, bitter almonds. That's right. Bitter almonds. Yeah. Well, I like that. So it's it's whiskey and amaretto. Whiskey and amaretto for the Godfather. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. None of us would be here, Mark, without you. And uh, I I think I I really do. I, I give thanks for him daily. I really do because he has changed my life. Just three years ago, he came into my life and uh, my life has changed. So listen, let's look at some comments, shall we? Yes. Uh, all right. Ooh, we got some good comments tonight. Um, what do you Barbara got? Thibodeau, Barbara Thibodeau, I got to give her props because if I can find it, I just saw uh where is it barbara oh she just pre-marketed seven properties barbara expand on that please so does this mean you're doing due diligence on these properties and you're pre-marketing that that that's what i would assume anyway good for you for taking massive action you deserve a godfather drink what's one of the best ways to pre-market a property what's one of the best ways craigslist Absolutely. What's another way? I like this, Barbara. Barbara, using the uh, Facebook, your buyers list. Well, buyers list is probably the buyers best, list. Honestly, most I mean, because look at the power of the buyers list, right? You have property in an area. You have a number of people that respond, and you sell it. So that means a number of people were not able to buy that property, and all of a sudden you have a property that you're going to be getting there, and you say, "Hey, don't miss your opportunity this time, right? You missed it last time. Don't miss it this time." And I'm going to put this out to you at a special price because you are on my preferred buyers list and, uh, you know, jump on it. And that's why we pre-sell properties. That's why we sell property. Buyers list is so powerful, right? I mean, these are people that missed out on an opportunity for a property and here they are. And is there another platform I could use to access somebody with say thousands of, uh, of people on their buyers list? What if I wanted to use somebody else's? I mean, that sounds like blasphemy, but can I do that? Can I use somebody else's buyers list? Of course you can, Mike can. Zeno, and, it, and it's on Land Moto. There it is. You complete me. Look at that. Land Moto. Scott Todd has actually sends out your properties to his buyers list. Which, how many thousands do you think that is? How many, have you looked at last count? How many is on that? You know what? I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. How many, how many is he up to now? It's thousands. Thousands. Yeah, I mean. It would be great. Maybe if Scott... Todd. He's got to be watching right watching. now. Scott Todd. Could you just weigh oh. in, please, and tell Alex me how many people are on your buyer's Trebek. list? Alex Trebek of the land community. That's how we usually bring him out. We start calling him like the guy from uh, uh, Alex Trebek from, uh, what, oh my God, Jeopardy. And then he pops up. How many people is on that? How many people are we going to get access to on Land Moto? How many thousands? Because I know it's thousands. Let us oh. know, Scott. Easy. Yeah. There it is. The right. so Barbara, Barbara, list. Um, Barbara spoke up. Barbara spoke so Barbara spoke up. She said she actually owns these lots. She owns the lots already, but she put out a sneak peek. I don't know where she put it, but she's getting hits right now. So that's awesome. Awesome. Remember, it's we talked about this uh, in a few one of the past episodes. We talked about the parade, right? Marketing, right? You have to continually market this to move the parade with, forward because somebody in that mile-long parade is going to buy your property. Got to get it to them. Look at that, Scott Keelan, neighbors, absolutely neighbors. One of the best-selling platforms, other than the buyers list, is the neighbors. That's exactly right. Thanks, Scott. Great point. That's awesome. All right, should we move on to another nightcap? Nightcap? Yeah, because this is really inspiring me, and I like how oh, it provokes thought. Good, right? Mm -hmm. a, no, a nightcap. Nightcap. It's, it's great. A, it's good. Good idea, right? Great idea. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Wait, question. <laughs> Question? He popped a question up. I have a crazy you, question. He asked raw? the question, can you sell raw land on Amazon? That, I have no idea. I do not believe you can <laughs> at this time. I know that we've talked about that. Uh, Mark's talked about that. At this time, I don't think you can. Um, so um, if anybody wants to weigh in on that, they've sold the property on Amazon, they can, uh, they can weigh in on that. But as far as I know, you're not going to get an Amazon Prime account and sell. But right. uh, why not? I'm kind of curious about Instagram. I'd, I'd kind of like to, uh, hey, Mark Manson is watching. He's a faithful viewer of ours. We have a lot of faithful viewers. I've been discovering uh, the last few weeks a lot of faithful viewers, right? 
Uh, and uh, I think pretty we're... awesome because don't you find that in this community, Mike, that I don't know, it's just uh, people love to just commune. And that's kind of what we're doing. I mean, we're just communing once a week. We get together, we have fun. I laugh at you. There's not much to laugh about here on this side, but I mean, that's. <laughs> but I have an answer for Jeannie too. What's that? Because there's something else you can get on Amazon that's just as good as selling land. It's called information, education. What could I buy on Amazon if I wanted to really learn more about land investing? Well, dirt rich. Dirt rich. That's on Amazon. It's like our fifth, it's our fifth complete me tonight. <laughs> dirt rich is on Amazon. And I hope everybody listening to us has, has a listen to dirt rich um, on, on audible or read it because if you're in this business, you're going to want to read that because you see how Mark goes through the whole process of proving the, you know, proof of concept, uh, which is huge and powerful to actually completing land deals and to just kind of going through the whole process of everything. And this is what you're doing if you're land investing. So you need to see the inside story of how he did it because it'll inspire you and teach you. And you know what else, Mike, that I love because I, I read it and now I'm listening to it because I, I just wanted to listen to Mark Podolsky on an audiobook. Like, how awesome is that? Like, but what I was what I was thinking about on my way to work the other day was when I was listening to him is listen to how many struggles Mark Podolsky has had. Right. Like you you look at a guy currently and you think Mark just must not have any struggles. And he might not have a lot of struggles right now, but he has had struggles. And to be able to relate to those. And to, to hear him talk about his struggles and be able to think to myself, wow, I've been there or I am there or I don't know. It's just, it's really awesome to be relatable to the land geek. And uh, I don't know, it just, uh, it, it's, it's, it puts, it kind of pushes me to be even better. Even, even three years later, it really does. Read a whole heart. Look at look at. We're talking about recipes. You think that a great, um, um, you know, someone who bakes pies, bakes cakes, or makes uh, food, they make a bad meal. Do they quit? That's it. Never baking another brownie again. Never, never baking another cake. Never making another chicken palm again. Right? No. They get back and then they do it again. So if you have a hard time with a land deal, or you maybe you buy, you get a little. I gotta have landitis, as Scott. Uh, uh, Todd likes to say, right? You buy something a little high, you can still sell it. You know, it. You know, you can still recover from that. And then the next time, you get better at it. Each time, you get better, right? So um, it's just. Awesome. Speaking of which, what's the? What is? What would be a solution to? I gotta have land on this. I have this land. I want to buy it, but I'm not sure if it's a good price. You know. So what would prevent me from having that problem in the first place? You I gotta have land this. I know the whole idea of I have this one piece of land I'm looking at. Should I get this piece of land? I don't know. I want this piece of land. Should I get this piece of land? I don't know. Like how, you know, I have this one choice, this one choice in front of me. And, and you know, how, how would I, how, how would I not have one choice? I guess. Would you not have one choice? Yeah. How do I only have, why do I only have one choice is my question to you. Why do I only have one property? What did I do? And, and uh, not enough of. Uh, due diligence? What are you mailing. talking about? Well, mailing. If I, if I, oh, mailing. I'm, not, I'm not leading you, into this as well. You don't enough. have enough. You don't have enough deal flow, is what you're right. Doing. So I have. I, okay. I wasn't explaining right. So basically, I have this one property that I'm like, wow, I don't know what. Well, you should have ten. You should have a stack that you're looking I at. I was also, I was also half listening because I was, I was, I wanted to hop in with another drink, but you changed subjects on me too quickly. Because well, I'm inspirational. <laughs> No, inspired, I mean. I'm not inspirational. I'm inspired by you. <laughs> you are right, right. Inspire me. <laughs> yeah, you basically, I, Ken and Zicka, not mailing enough, right? Barbara, not mailing enough. Uh, Michael, mailing. It's true, right, Scott? I mean, we mail, I mail thousands of letters, right? I have tons of offers. Now, I'm not saying mail thousands in the beginning because one thing that might limit someone if they don't have a system, right? So, and, and if they're just trying to do all the work themselves, you know, that can be, Difficult. It's why Scott recommends. How many does he recommend typically per week? What's our 
a typical 20, salary point. 20 a day, 20 a day. A day, 100 a week, right? That gets a week. just enough to get you going through the process, but don't make the mistake. You don't stay at 100 a week, 20 a day. That's just to get the deal flow. flow. Uh, and when that sign ever gets up, I know my wife's watching somewhere. When that sign finally gets here, that says deal flow solves everything. That comes from massive mailing. And that's not 100 a week once you get rolling in this business. It's a lot more than that. Because remember, that's our lifeblood. That's where our deals come from. So if you have got to, I got to have Landitis, you're worried about one deal, mail some more letters. Totally. Good, so good point. Good okay. point. Back to the drinks. Oh, back to the drinks. Yeah. Uh, the next nightcap, nightcap. Well, you know what? Back to kind of what we were talking about before. Like, even Mark Podolsky has been punched in the stomach, right? You've been punched in the stomach. I've been punched in the stomach. So did you know that there's a drink called punch, punch in the stomach? No. What's and I it? don't know if I would recommend like drinking when you're down, but if you're amongst friends <laughs> and you want a good punch in the stomach and, and, and you want to, you want to kind of, I don't know, you, you know, you have a bad day, you get punched in the stomach by the land business. Mike, have you been punched in the stomach by the land business? Of course, anybody who's doing this for a long period of time is going to have, look, at a good punch in the stomach is this. I have this incredible land deal, right? The only problem is uh, the, the grandson of the, of the nephew of the uncle who once owned it wants to sell it to me. I want to make so much money. Yeah, but there's no deal there. You can't get, I mean, that's a punch in the stomach. You think you have this great deal, but the person responding to you has no ability to set, to sign it over to you to, to convey title. That's a punch in the stomach. You think all the time, hey, what about this one? They, they, you want that. You want to, out of this mess, make a deal, but it's not always there. We go for the low-hanging fruit, right? So that's a punch in the stomach, I'd say. But you know what solves that, Mike? Tell me. Oh, you tell me. Mailing. Lots of mailing. Mailing and deal flow, right? right so Deal flow, Laura. Deal flow solves everything. Laura. Yeah, because the sign's not there yet. So, so if you come to a point where you need to wallow a little bit in your frustrations and your the punches to the stomach, here's a drink for you folks. It's called the punch in the stomach. What's in it? All right. I'm going to tell you what's in it. Ooh, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of stuff. For one serving, this doesn't sound right. Uh, three ounces of gold tequila. Three ounces of Hawaiian punch. No wonder it's a three, punch in the stomach. Three ounces of uh, Sprite. And one slice of pineapple. Wow, that sounds really good. Sounds Ooh. really good. A little bit of there, yeah. So it's like it sounds like a punch in the stomach is a mix of like a mailing gone bad. Because guess what? Sometimes your mailing may not be as successful as you hope. But over... The long haul, consistent mailing brings deals. So one may not be the most productive, but the second one may be really productive, right? So that's that's a punch in the stomach sometimes, like a mailing doesn't go the way you anticipated, right? Another punch we said is you get someone that uh, calls back, wants to sell you the property, but they don't own the property, right? Or how about they do own the property? It's an incredible location. Love it. Road access. It's incredible. Overlooking this big reservoir. Taxes are like 2000 in, in arrears, right? Bang, down, there's your punch in the stomach, right? So these things continue, or you know, you can just go on and on and on, right? How this could happen. But first, you don't, we don't make or break ourselves on one deal. It comes through. Exactly. We don't make or, make or break ourselves on one deal. And you know what? We have buddies that we can relent with, right? Yes. I can share the punch in the stomach with you because you've been there. Right. You know, All right. I would so, have to say there's one quote I'd like to say right here based on that. Please. It's a, it's a, it's a Tate Litchfield quote. He said, there's no land emergencies, right? So if you nice. feel like it's an impending, like I got to do this right now, I'm going to lose the deal. If that's really the case, that there's nothing going wrong. There's no land emergencies as Tate Litchfield would say. You're very right. Hey, I love that. I love that. All right. Should we do a comment or two? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, this is from uh, Jim. And by the way, Jim, I have to uh, congratulate you on two huge things this week. Not only your first sale, but 
the birth of your beautiful baby daughter. Pretty awesome, huh? That's awesome. Two things, two amazing things in one week. Obviously, the birth of the daughter trumps the land deal, but still, uh, that, that's pretty awesome. All right, so Jim does have a question, though. He says, uh, I've gotten an accepted offer, but the comps are few and far between. Mike, how similar slash numerous, I'm having a hard time with my, how similar slash numerous should the comps be to get? I'm looking at it. Comfort? I can't. Comfort. Yeah, he's a, he's a little nervous about knowing if he's actually got a good deal is what it is here, right? So he's looking at an accepted offer. There we go. The comps are few and far between. How similar or numerous? Well, you want to get something in close proximity, right? So, you know, you go on land mode, you look around there. You go um, on other, you, you can Google search it, right? You can search eBay. You can search land watch. You just look for things that are in the area, right? And again, you want to target it kind of specifically, right? You don't, the same reason when we do a mailing, right? We don't just come up, this is one and I'm, this is going to relate to it, right? You don't want to say, geez, everything in, let's use one of the famous counties, Custia County. Everything in Custia County is uh, $400 an acre, everything. Well, that's not true. So if you mail with that kind of thought process in your head, you'd be way low on some and way high on others, right? It just wouldn't work. So, you know, you want to really be specific to the area that you're in. That's why when we, Scott Todd teaches batching, right? When you go to make your first mailing, you bring it down, right down to the subdivision. You batch out 50, 100, whatever it may be, and you can price those, right? So same thing when it comes to a deep analysis of due diligence. You want to get something close, right? The closest you can find, the closest sold comp. If it's listed, take 10, take 20% off because it's listed. It's not sold. Divide it by four. Get an aggressive price and make your offer. I mean, listen, these people are more – remember this, Scott. This is true, right? And you and I talk about this. All we're looking for people to do – is raise their hand and say, I'm not interested in my land anymore. I want to sell it. That is the discussion you're trying to bring out by your offer letter. So make no mistake that you're, that's why the, the amounts, why people stress when they say, should I mail 500, 400, 600? I don't care. Either one. Because when you get the accepted offer, someone just raised their hand and said, hey, I want to save my land and I'm motivated. Great. Now you say, oh, I'm going to do a little due diligence. I want to double check. Give me a couple of days. And you look at it, now you dive deep. And if you see the lowest comp divided by four and, and you look at it and go, wow, I offered too much, renegotiate, retrade. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in a great spot, be like, renegotiate, retrade. Because <laughs> this person's motivated. You can still get it cheaper. So um, just do your best to find things close proximity, right? Similar features, right? And just divide, be aggressive. And then, um, you know, you could always come back to the person, right? And say, hey, truly, look at it. I'm not finding a lot of comps out there. There seems to be a very uh, small movement in the market out there. Therefore, I have to be extra cautious. I mean, I don't want to overinvest. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put, so I'm going to have to be very conservative. I'd like to offer you more, but truly, and offer them an amount that you know is really safe. There's always a number, right? And do it and be surprised when they say yes. That's awesome. Awesome advice, dude. That's awesome yeah. advice to Jim. Yeah. All right. Loving it. So let's see here. Laura Zeno says, uh, Tate is a genius. I would agree. Wait, did she say uh, where my sign is? What's she that? Says, Tate's a genius, but, but where, where, where's my sign, Laura? Yeah, I don't know, Laura. I, I didn't no mean comment to... on the sign. We'll get the sign, Laura. We'll get the sign. You know no. what I think, Ty, you know, I think it's time, though, because uh, I'm out. Oh, let's bring him up. I'm out. Here he comes. It's time for the refill segment. And here it with, comes, Matt. With Matt Forbes. There he is. Refill. Matt, there you are. There we go. Matt, I it's think I the refill have, segment, you, Matt Forbes. Weird, I think you could have been like the voice of God. It said that I could let you speak, but you'd still be an attendee. That'd be like the voice of God coming in. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. Then we can tell you to, you know, shut it down. Your wife will buy you your little sign. You'll have it by next yeah, week. Settle down, old man. Yet? Man. The sign is on the way. Oh, the sign brutal. is on the way, Laura. All so right. All there. right. Yeah, you settle down. All right. We're all doing well, uh, maybe. So uh, get your cocktail. <laughs> get, get your glass. Uh, I'm drinking scotch tonight. There we go. A little whiskey. Looks good right there. One cube. And... Uh, 
Cheers. Uh, the most appropriate night ever, since we're all we're doing is talking about drinking. What do you think of those shot yeah. glasses that look like cigars? What do you think of those? Uh, I, I, you know, you ever go to the clubs and like they have those things? Uh, they freak me out. So oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm out. That's, yeah, no. Seriously. No. I mean, I can tell. I have seven things to say about that, and all of them are grossly inappropriate. So I'll keep them all. The Not mind. the same. Thank you, Matt. That's exactly what that is. Okay. Bye, Matt. Let's say you look extra stunning in blue this evening. On to more drinking. Why? Thank you. I was at a charity event. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you say it, Matt. You better hang out because we're bringing you back for the uh, sign-off. Mike, Mike, I think it's time for a segment. Well, let's keep Matt on for the segment. Go. Ahead. What's the segment? All right, Matt, because you, you're from out east too. I think it is definitely time for the Boston Laga segment. Well, Matt's just favorite gonna segment on Laga. Matt's going to agree with anything I say because we say it the same way. Uh, uh, segment. Correctly. No, 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 no. First of all, I live probably an hour from Mike Zeno. And uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I speak uh, like a normal, uh, educated human. Where uh, Zeno uh, talks like, uh, well, he talks like Mike Zeno, which is why it's so much fun. So I can't wait to hear this. Let's go. What do we got here? Laura, Matt, Laura Matt, Matt, Matt. How, do you say, how do you say the word? Uh, how do you say the word? C H E A T E R. You ask uh, you already asked me that. If it's me, I say uh, cheater. If I'm Mike Zeno, I go, you're a wicked cheetah. 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 You're a wicked cheetah. I'm going to you because you're a cheetah. Yeah. We can't <laughs> play God. I'm going to you because you're as quick as a cheetah. All right. So. What's tonight? Uh, that was tonight? We already did that one. Yeah, I know we already did it, but I like to revisit it because it is my favorite. Blinka. <laughs> the cheetah. Until, I feel like Blinka. Until tonight. Until tonight. Oh, you, you got ready? another one? You're ready. Oh, yeah, I got another one. So it's time for the Boston Lager Word of the Week. The AKA What the Bleep Are You Saying Mike Zano Word of the <laughs> Which, Week. By the way, yeah. happens. Scott, I got to say two things before you do that. Number one, we vox her back and forth, right? And, uh, and uh, sometimes Scott literally says to me, um, Mike, what did you what say? Did you say? Like, literally. Like, literally. And then Kevin Levy, I was talking to this gentleman, Kevin Levy, he's a real estate agent, and I was talking to him today, and he told me there's another one, Scott, we need to get, it's called Marco Polo. It's like Voxer, but with video message. No way. Yes. Mm. Let's do it. So anyway, you, go ahead. You two, can, you two can virtually hang out even more than you do right now. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You have to get the wives' approval on that there, fellas. That could get ugly. Let's. All right. Let's get back to the Boston Lagos segment. You ready? Yes. In this segment, the, com the community will learn a new Bostonian word, either a word that is commonly mispronounced by Boston Bostonites properly, or a slang word that none of us understand. It's pronounced by the rest the of America. Word. So it works like this. Mike, I'm going to spell a word, right? And you are going to repeat that word back to me. What happened? You ready? Well, you're just doing like lip syncing there? Like I didn't even hear you. You just moved your lips and nothing came out. Can you hear me now? I can. You're going to repeat the word back to me. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. P-A-R-T-Y. Party? 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 <laughs> That's not a party. party. Going to a party. Can't wait to go to a that party. party. Yes. Listen. Yes. Next party, I'm not inviting you if that's what you're saying a party is. Party. Oh my God. Matt, we'll oh talk to you in a minute. I can't the take night it. is going downhill, ladies and gentlemen. Matt, Matt, we'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> party. 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 That was awesome. You have to admit it. It was very good. All right. We better get back to Land Invest before people sign off and say all they do is drink and talk about funny words. All right. What's the next drink? The next drink, the next nightcap on nightcap. It's 10, 12. I don't know. I'm just take, uh, taking a peek at the time there. So, uh, all right. Any By questions? Way, Laura, Laura agrees that it's called a potty. Potty. That was awesome. How'd you know okay, I was so, to say that? Jeez, I, I think... Uh, 
we would be remiss if we did not dedicate one of our nightcap nightcaps. I know where you're going to, with this. Yeah, you hear me? The man, the to, myth. Uh, huh? The man, the myth. The man, the myth, the legend. The, the, 007, big bat. the 007 of this community, right? Yes. Uh, Scott Dad. Scott Todd. And I know he's listening. Uh, I know he's out there. He just doesn't like to comment all the time. But Do you remember the 007 uh, intro we had back back when we had him on a long time ago? The problem wish, was we were on Be Live and we had to have a translator. I wish we had that queued up. We're but gonna, anyway, we're going to bring him back on the show. Yeah, we need to. The Within 007. The seven, this nightcap nightcap is dedicated to Scott Todd. It's called the 007 Martini. Any guesses, Mike, on uh, what might be in the 007 Martini? It's got to be definitely something smart. Smart. I'll tell you, be smart. Scott is my older brother in land investing, even though I'm actually older than he is. I found that out in the last boot camp. Um, yes, true. A couple months older. But he is an inspiration. Uh, I always learn from him. Every time we're at the, at, at the boot camps, there's always... Uh, some sort of gem and you know hey, this is why I, I you know some of my best friends are my virtual friends because these are people that bring us to a higher level of success just by being around them and being exposed to them and their methods and Scott Todd is phenomenal I mean people go in we have people that go into these um, uh, flight school courses that are already successful land investors right and they still are blown away by Scott Todd's uh, quote unquote genius, um, per, you know, just the way he approaches the business, the way that he can take, because I always tell people, here's the thing, right? What I didn't like in school, Scott, is when I would read a book and I go to the uh, classroom and they put the overhead projector on and they'd say, okay, chapter one, blah, 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 right? It's like, really? Right. You're going to read this? And they would literally read what you read, right? That's So the flight school is not the toolkit with Scott Todd walking you through the toolkit. The toolkit's a reference manual, a phenomenal reference manual, recently revamped, by the way, correct? Right. Right. Well, it's rolling out next week. So stay tuned for that. So it's really Scott Todd's business model. And I think of Lego blocks and his business model is a whole bunch of them put together, but he shows you how to build those blocks one at a time. So this is, it's a phenomenal experience. So he is a genius when it comes to land investing. So I think 007 is going to have something really smart in it. Uh, he he is the 007. So I mean, shaken not stirred, shaken not stirred. Good good work. Uh, Scott Todd was my coach three years ago, and I mean, I owe so much to this man. He he taught me so many things. But do you know what the beauty of this is? Like things evolve over time, right? Like. Three years ago, things were so much different than they are today. So, like, I would spend a lot of time with Scott Todd on the phone, and and he'd tell me to go do something, and I'd do it for a couple of weeks, and and then I'd come back, and and we'd be like, yeah, the, you know, Scott, you're on the right track, or Scott, you're not on the right track, and then, you know what, we we'd get into some new new content. But like, the amazing thing is now, like, he teaches this to a group of people. He teaches how to land invest to a group of people. 10 to 12 people all at the same time. And he's teaching you for 60 to 90 minutes. He's just like being very transparent with his information. He's showing you how he runs his land business in flight school. He's telling you, this is what you need to do to get from point A to point B in your little underground car, your under underwater car. <laughs> but he's showing you exactly how to do it. And that's the power of flight school. Like, I don't know. To me, it's just, it's so amazing that he is teaching you for 60, 90 minutes and saying to you, this is exactly what you need to do. This is how I do it. Let's do it. And, and he holds you accountable. And then there are people in that class. They hold each other accountable. You push yes. each other forward. It's absolutely phenomenal. He is the James Bond of the community. What's in the drink? What's in the drink? The drink is... One ounce of vodka, oh. one ounce of gin, Ooh. 
Yes. Half teaspoon of extra dry vermouth. Scott's a little dry. He's very. <laughs> He's level. And, and what is this, Mike? Half ounce of Lila Blanc. Lila well, Scott's Lila a little Blanc. mysterious, too. So that makes sense. It's a mysterious what element. Is, what the heck is that? Lila Blanc? Blanc, like a white. B L A N K. Is that like a white wine oh, or something? Blank. I don't know, but I'm mysterious. The Scott is definitely slightly mysterious. Lille Blanc. That sounds amazing. I'm going to have one. You know what, though? No matter where you are or who you were with, here's some, here's some advice from Scott Bossman. Let's hear it. There is a two martini limit. Where, no matter where you are or who you're with, Mike, two martini limit. Just remember that. Yeah, you don't want to go number three. No. Number three is not good. All right. How are we doing? We're Andrew. doing good. I mean, you know, we probably have time for one more drink. <laughs> we probably have time for that third martini. Oh, no, there's a two martini limit. All mm -hmm. right. So let's see here. Um, so many drinks to choose from. Maybe one more that I can springboard off of. Springboard. Yeah, I'm working on it. So, oh, I'm ready to dive in. I'm bouncing on the board. So this this is kind of a fun one because do you ever hear those people that uh, God, what's the name of those people who they just they want to have a piece of land to retreat retreat to when there is an all out apocalypse land preppers preppers that's it preppers that's another uh, Boston leg of wood preppers um, but <laughs> what why do you hate me? Uh, so anyway, um, and I believe Scott Todd has marketed land in this way. And I think a lot of other people have as well, um, marketing land as your zombie apocalypse, uh, retreat. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. But there are preppers out there. Like they want to have a place to go. Should should the world run out of coffee? Down. What's should the that? world run out of coffee? They need to go yeah. somewhere because that's the real zombie apocalypse. When coffee goes, then everybody's gonna go crazy. Yeah, we don't want that. So when the coffee runs out, you need a piece of land to go to. So, so my last drink of the evening is called the zombie, right? Okay. Uh, and and I'm. Do you want to expand on that at all or not? I want. I challenge zombie. you to expand. I challenge you to expand on this one. Well, the zombie can be taken in many different aspects, right? A zombie could be a, someone who's a land investor that gets so bogged down trying to make things happen instead of letting things happen. They work to the point of just exhaustion. You know why you would work to the point of exhaustion? Because you don't have direct focus. You don't know what to do and when to do it. You are just overwhelmed with information, right? And so you just work, work, work. And maybe you're sitting there and you're going up doing your, the most wonderful website ever. But the whole time, you're not doing the mailing and the marketing. So you know what the answer to being a zombie is? Flight school. You know what to do. Oh, what yes. to do it. Flight school. Fly away from those zombies. Because if you know what to do and when to do it, you're not going to work to the point of your eyes bleeding and just like, oh, I'm gonna, you're going to be up there falling asleep at the computer trying to do stuff. Because you have focus and you know what to do and when to do it. Scott Todd is like a drill sergeant that keeps you in line. That's the answer. That's how zombie can be solved. Flight school will save you from the zombie apocalypse. Listen, that's it's an analogy. It's, a, it's your personal zombie apocalypse. It's like you're just sitting. Listen, we've all had these apocalyptic moments when we're on the computer late at night trying to do something and you're like doing this, right? Nod off. Nod off. And you're trying to focus and you're nodding off. Nothing's getting done. Go to bed, wake up, get some education and get an action plan. Go to flight school. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. You are amazing, my friend. I just, you know, it's, a, it's like, this is the adult version. Remember when you used to have, did you have, I don't know if you in Wisconsin, you had these things, but they go around, ding, 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 and they play music, and you get the ice cream off of them. What are they called? 
Sunny Girl, like Sunny Boy. Ice... What? We call them Sunny trucks? Sunny Girl and Sunny Boy was the name of the ice cream place around here. But they had these little ice creams in them, right? And at the bottom was a little sweet little candy or a gumball. At the bottom of an adult drink, you get those cherries right there. And that's how I know the show is just about over because it's time for those cherries. There they are. You do have a cherry in your drink. You didn't even share that earlier. Two. Two maraschino cherries in your drink. That's awesome. Do you want to hear what's in the zombie? I think we should. Yes, let's hear it. You ready? Here's what's in the, here's what's in the zombie. Vice Half ounce white. Zombies. Oh, man. This is, this is going to, seriously, this is going to mess with you. Half ounce white rum. One and a half ounce golden rum. One ounce dark rum. Half ounce 151 proof rum. One ounce lime juice. One teaspoon pineapple juice. One teaspoon papaya juice. And one teaspoon super fine sugar. You know what happens? You take one shot, you feel like you're there at 11.30 at night on the computer going, I'm going to get this eventually. And you wake up. And now 15 more minutes pass by. And you wake back up at 15. And you're like, I'm going to figure this out. Stop forcing it. Trade it in for a 007 martini. Yes. Trade it in. Please trade that drink in. Because that will leave you under the table for probably two days. On that note, <laughs> Eat the cherry. Good work. Hey, we should probably close up. It's 1020. Dude, it's 1024. How does time go by so quickly? It's actually 1124 in my world. Yeah, you're, you're tired. Tired. I'm inspired. Uh, Lorenzo says, ooh, don't drink that. I would agree. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for watching tonight. It was fun. We were a little bit unprepared, but I think it turned out okay. You know, no, we were totally prepared because that's the format. It's it's part structure, part inspiration, part, listen, part, and I'm going to say major part, community involvement. And, you know, we've had a great community. So uh, Larry Overstreet, I see he's a big rum lover. He's got a lot of M's in the rum and an M. And, but Laura's saying, oh, don't drink that. I guess she's not a rum lover. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not a rum lover either, either. So, Larry Overstreet, more power to you. Larry, I hope things are going well in the RV. I've been keeping up with your uh, with some of your posts. Well, I feel like you're so. flaunting the Hawaiian shirt this evening because you didn't tell me it was a Hawaiian shirt night. How awesome is that shirt, though? I'm not sure what color it really is because those lights make it look pink and blue. My wife got this shirt for me. It is pink and blue. Pineapples. See, Laura thought I was colorblind. I see it. Pink and blue all the way. Pink and blue. Mike. I'm bring Matt I, back up for the final outro. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I had fun with you tonight, uh, Michael. <laughs> Michael, that just sounds awful weird when you call me by my full name. Michael, what's your middle name? It, I would preface this by saying it was my grandfather's name, Ralph. Ralph, I love that. Michael Ralph. And now we can unmute. Matt, you got some weird color to you there. Yeah, I turned on my lights. Exciting. <laughs> you're making fun of, you're probably making fun of me. Uh, I'm almost always making fun of you. So, yeah. Wow. Are we ready for the outro? Yeah. Well, we, we need a toast, right? Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. I got to say one more thing. Good if time. you'd like to see this show live and in person, there's only one place in <laughs> October you have to be. Zeno's house. Not my house. Oh, not his house. We will do it in your house someday. Uh, Orlando Boot Camp. Orlando yeah. Boot Camp. Sign up now. Mm. It will sell out. It's a small venue, and it will sell out. And you want to be there all day Friday, all day Saturday, half day Sunday. Mark's to go through deal flow over and over again. You're going to see all of us. We're all going to be there. Matt Forbes is going to be there. We're all going to be there. Chuck it really is an amazing experience. It's right around the corner. Seriously, it's like six weeks away, seven weeks away. Ooh. That's insane. Laura um, thinks I got to burn. There we go. There you I'm go. Our, sorry, look at the I stuff. want to encourage everyone for next week because, and here's my promise to you. Within the next two weeks, we will have Scott Todd back on this show in a way that we will not need a translator. 
and we were going to bring 007 on here. And I guarantee, while I can't guarantee, I, I believe he will be drinking. What drink will he have, Scott? What's the last time um, he had? What drink did he have? Soda water. No, he had a pina colada. Oh, that's right. He so, did have a pina colada. So good. He had a pina colada. So I, I like believe he'll, we'll have him on here. And uh, Alara put the dates on there, 19th to the 21st. That's Orlando. It's, uh, I was just looking for that, Laura. You're amazing, yeah. Laura. Thank you. Yeah, she's even. Uh, you can also go says, to, Matt, uh, looks like you have a burn. That's what she's saying, Matt. Yeah, I, know. I, I had the lights on. So. I think she's to, register, uh, to register, please go to the landgeek.com slash bootcamp. And I'm hoping that right, uh, uh, soda water yeah. was Damien. Yes, soda water. Laura's saying soda water was Damien. But Scott, did you already reserve your room? We're going to reserve our rooms for Orlando. <laughs> This we got to do that. Up. Yeah, we got to do that. Uh, here's the other thing that I would I recommend. Done that yet. Mm. If there are any folks watching tonight that... Watching or watching? I said watching. That accent. I couldn't quite tell. <laughs> there any, Matt Forbes. If there are any folks watching tonight who either have the investor toolkit or are thinking about getting the investor toolkit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And have questions. Yeah. Wow. I think what he's trying to say, if you have questions, can you hear us now? Wow. I have the full floor. How did I do that? It was like, you, I the purpose. If you have questions, this huge buildup and then his mic just dies. He reached out to us, Info, Info Lange, guys. We are going to be doing some webinars. We're going to be talking about it. You can, Scott, I think your earpiece has died. You know, yeah. that's what it was. But yeah, he, listen. He looks good, though. You look great. You got a Hawaiian. Doesn't he look good? Doesn't everybody, doesn't he look good? Comment how good. He's got the apricot shirt on. Yeah. It looks great. Listen. We're going to be having some uh, some uh, webinars about the toolkit if you guys want. So we'll get some information out. But I want everybody to come next week. Let's get some questions out there. It's time for the outro. Thank you all for coming. Here we go. I'm going to share my screen. And <laughs> let's just do this. Here we go. Hey, one more cherry.